Hello caffeine fiends and welcome to another coffee review video for www.getbean.com I'm Vince the Mean Bean Machine and today we're looking at Lost Sheep Coffees Get to the Hopper so it's their shop blend um, of coffee uh, so I found Lost Sheep via uh, actually an article on the Independent the Independent website formerly the Independent newspaper no longer in print um, basically about the best kind of independent coffee roasters of 2022 and these guys came up kind of at the top 10 out of 10 they gave it which I'm a little spurious about I don't think there's very few things in life you can say are truly perfect but I wasn't there for the scoring system I don't know whatever but it did come top of the class so we're gonna give it a go uh, so from what I know about Lost Sheep Coffee, it was started by a couple of a couple who went to Australia, loved the scene out there, and basically brought back the kind of roasting passion and whatnot back to the UK. Um, so they've started up their own roastery, and uh, that's what Lost Sheep are doing. So I opted for their kind of home blend, get to the hopper, shop blend as it were, because uh, it's got bold chocolate and smooth tones. Uh, it's Colombian and Brazilian blend. So, what am I expecting from bold chocolate and smooth? There's, that's not really a lot of tasting notes there. So I'm expecting bold chocolate and smooth. <laughs> that's, that's not particularly helpful, but <clears throat> uh, it'll be nice if it isn't rough on the throat. Oh, throat? Ooh. Rough on the throat. Um, and it, it'll be, you know, if it is smooth and quite chocolatey, that'd be, you know, quite a nice creamy latte, effectively. So what I've done is I've done my usual of breaking it down into an espresso shot, an oat milk latte, and that's just my water to clear my palate. So before I begin, lovely. So 200 grams for 7.95 from their website. So you'll find now. Uh, because of inflation, various other things, uh, where coffee roasters are trying to, I guess, I mean, this is happening across all industries, not just coffee, but you'll find some people reluctant to raise their price point, so they'll keep the price point the same, and your what was formerly 250 grams, which I've always kind of perceived as the standard bag of coffee, is now becoming 200 grams, or your 250 gram bag of coffee is going up in price so 7.95 is what i would expect it's not a bad price at all for a blend so and if it's good great that's that's exactly the sort of price point i'd be looking at so here goes smell okay quite a citrusy smell off it what's this a bold chocolatey and smooth so all i've got is chocolate to go on there so unless it tastes like a hot chocolate, you're wrong, if you see what I mean. Um, anyway, so I get citrusy tones from the smell, which will be interesting if they come through, because you would think you would mention citrusy tones, but... Yeah. No, I don't know. There is a... There is citrus to it, but there's no kind of acidity. It is smooth, very smooth. It does just slide down. You take the initial sip and you kind of expect a clutch at the back of your throat, but there is nothing. It's quite kind of, there's almost a viscosity to it. It's quite sticky, um, quite thick almost. Um, and that comes down to the mouthfeel. It's not, it's, it's the same coffee, you know, same water to bean ratio as I always have, realistically. Um, but yeah, there's something, it's almost like chocolate orange as opposed to just chocolate, which is pleasant. It's pleasant and it is sweet, it's very sweet, but I'm not particularly getting chocolate. There's a richness to it, which I guess is where you'd kind of pick the chocolate. But if if, if I read kind of raisins or something, sultanas or something along those lines, I'd also kind of pick up on that vibe. So there is a kind of dark, 
richness to it that's chocolatey, but the sweetness comes from an almost citrusy tone, but there's no acidity to it. That's why I'm kind of saying chocolate orange as opposed to orange. And it's not too harsh. I think you could give that espresso shot to non-espresso drinkers and they'd be able to, you know, deal with that quite comfortably. There's no kind of sharpness or acidity. It is quite smooth. It hints at that, but when you swallow it, it's actually very smooth. Um, I would have expected more chocolate to come out, weirdly, but it's very pleasant espresso shop. I could have that daily and I'm not an espresso drinker particularly either. So, chocolate orange, not too biting, kind of smooth, quite a thick, viscous mouthfeel, quite nice. Perhaps expected a bit more bite, a bit more richness, a bit more chocolatiness, but very pleasant espresso. So, what am I now expecting from the oat latte? Well, that will either pair back a few things and that chocolatey tone or note will rise through the oat. Or, weirdly, it may, that, that, that kind of orange note I picked out, and it doesn't say orange, so it's just the vibe I'm getting, um, might kind of rise to the fore a bit. But it's not acidic, it's not an acidic tone, so I don't expect it to. So this is maybe where that chocolate note comes out. Um, like I say, I've not got a lot to go on, just bold chocolate smooth. So Colombian coffee is, you know, usually quite rich and quite chocolatey. And Brazil, not, not usually my bag, but I guess, I guess you'd get a bit more acidity. I just don't know. Anyway, so here goes for the oat latte. Yeah, it's more like, I think that's a latte drinker's coffee. That chocolatey element is really complimented, complimented? complimented by the oat milk. Um, and I think, I think there, there is an element of this is, this is for the milky drinks, those who aren't necessarily having specialist coffee or, 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 or dipping their toes into specialist coffee. And I think that's a great kind of starting point. You know, if you drink milky drinks, that is really nice and chocolatey. I don't get a lot, a lot else. <laughs> Probably why they've just gone bold, chocolatey, smooth. Because that's what you get. Um, it's really chocolatey, actually. Um, and it's really quite a nice, mild, very pleasant morning drink. I like that a lot, I like it a lot. But there's nothing bold or punchy that really kind of knocks me sideways and goes, oh, that's something new. And I, I'm not, that's not a negative. I sort of expected that because this is the shop blend, yeah, so the house blend or whatever. House blend is always, you know, there's this suggestion that the house blend is always the best of the best. It's not, it's the one that appeals to the most people, if you see what I mean, yeah? So there's an element of it being the best of the best, but it's 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 usually quite smooth and quite laid back. And that's exactly what you get from that. It's a really nice, smooth, chocolatey coffee. Bold is not something I particularly say about it, pot potentially in the uh, espresso shop. But yeah, nice and smooth, very pleasant. I would actually, I might try out some of their their different stuff and see what if there is anything that's that's bolder um, and pushes that envelope a little bit more but I'm gonna go away think about that finish off my latte write up some notes and I'll come back to you in the meantime do hit those like and subscribe buttons and check us out at www.getbean.com so I've gone away and thought about it so here are my final thoughts on Lost Sheep Get to the Hopper, and the more I think about it, the more I enjoy it. I've actually given it four stars um, because of the price point of $7.95 and the fact it sort of does, although it's very basic, I would like informa more information. Yes, I would like more information about Origin rather than just Brazil, Colombia. Yes, I would like more of tasting notes rather than just smooth, chocolatey, bold. However, 
it does sort of stick to it. It is very smooth and rich. Um, uh, you know, and there's that orangey tone that comes out as an espresso, but there's no biting acidity, so it is smooth. It does have a nice kind of, you know, mouthfeel, really lovely, thick, dense mouthfeel. And it comes into its own as a latte. It's very smooth and creamy, and that chocolatiness really pushes through. Um, and the more I think about it, I'm like, yeah, the more I really enjoy this coffee, it's something I actually would genuinely love um, in normal terms. So I've given it four stars because of its price point, because it does what it says. Um, and it's just a really lovely coffee. So I would give it a go. Um, and I'm really kind of happy that I've discovered them. So yeah, thank you very much. Like I say, do hit those like and subscribe buttons. Check us out at www.getbean.com. And well, I'll see you all for the next video. Bye-bye.